I'm so sad. I was going to start this podcast out so happy and fun and it was going to be great. I was going to be in a good mood because I still had hope, foolish hope that I would win and beat Tristan. But DK Metcalf just scored a 75-yard touchdown. So I am absolutely not going to win. No hope. All my hope is gone. Alex Collins would have to pull out a 50-point fantasy game. And Metcalf and what's-his-face would have to not touch the ball for the rest of the game. And that's just not possible. So I'm going to lose. Which is all right. I'll take five wins in a row. No problem. I'll take five wins in a row. I mentioned it in the podcast or in the power rankings, so I won't go in depth, but I may lose five in a row just by the timing of it all because Tristan's going to beat me. Then I go play Alex, and Alex's roster is full. No players out, no players injured, no players on bye week. And he's got a full like he's got a full roster. So he's gonna have an incredible week because his team would be incredible if he had a full roster every week. So I'm screwed there. Then I have to go play Aiden, who's getting Christian McCaffrey back that week. So Christian McCaffrey's gonna rally the boys around him and Aiden's team is probably gonna go off. So it's one, two, three right there. And then next is Matt who loves beating me, so I bet you I'll lose to Matt, too. And then I don't know who play after that, but I'm just... Like I said very early on in the podcast, when you lose a game in fantasy, it seems like you can never win again, at least for me. That's how I feel um, when I lose a game, so I'm so sad. But anyways, it's podcast time. It's cashback match, people. Podcast. Are you guys ready for the Justice League podcast this week? I don't think you are. I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into. Anyways, last week I guaranteed 25 views. Couldn't get it. I think I got 23. But I got 21 of those views in two days. So I I, I hit the ground running. I was flying after two days. I thought, oh my god, I'm going to get like 40 views this week. Unfortunately, I did not. Unfortunately, it slowed way down, which was um, kind of sad. But anyways, um, I didn't do my research like I said I was. I said I was going to look up if Zach is the most prolific scorer through th- seven weeks. Didn't do it. Forgot. Didn't have time. Pick your excuse. Uh, maybe I'll do that next week because he's extending his prolific, prolific, pro, pro, what would be pro, proficiency? Pro, prolificity? Prolificity? What's the like? What's that word for prolific? I can't think of it right now. Someone in the comments, let me know. <clears throat> Zach is the most prolific scorer of seven weeks. He's continuing his prolificity into week eight, so he might be the most prolific scorer in week eight. He might just end up being the most prolific scorer uh, of all time. It might not. I'm like, it might not even matter. He might just be the most prolific fantasy score of all time this year. We'll see. Um, so I apologize for not, um, for not, for not doing my research for not covering that. Um, and then we had one of the most highly touted games in Justice League history. I haven't done my research on this yet either. I should, probably should have, but I was gonna look up like, well, you can't really because this is. Like, Zach versus Luke was projected 116 points versus 113 points. So, a projected total of 229 points, right? I did that math right. 229 points. That's got to be the highest projected final total of all time. 116 has to be one of the highest projected. I'm pretty sure we've seen a 120, but a 116 versus 113, I don't think I've ever seen that in the Justice League. That was incredibly high um and in the and it paid off what a game what a game it was luke versus zach um 
uh, Luke versus Zach was a great game. 126 to 119, I think, was the final score. 127. Sorry, I got distracted there for a second because I've got the game on here. Um, as you know, as I have said, so I'm getting in my head a little bit. 127 to 116. That's what I want to say. So it, it, it lived up to its touting. And I mean, what a like what a game. Herbie fully loaded. Obviously, is super unlucky. He's just um, Luke's got a great team, but uh, uh, should be winning. And then to round it out, the top division versus the bottom division is going interesting. It's it. I think it finished even last week. No, it couldn't have. It had to because there's five games, so it can't finish even. Last week it finished. Um, yeah, last week it finished three and two with the top division starting out three and two. This week, top division got its shit kicked in. Pretty sure we lost every single matchup. So it were, it's, it's now three and seven. The bottom division, loser slack offs like Jim, is kicking our behinds this week. No, Aaron Aaron redeemed us. Aaron redeemed us. So one and four. So three and – so four and six. It's four to six, top division to bottom division uh, over the span. They're not not counting all time, just counting the span of, you know, five weeks that uh, we we play each other, which is week six, seven, eight, and nine, I believe, is all – is exclusively top division – First bottom division. So three and six, four and six, four and six, four and six. Yep. Um, top division. We are getting showed up right now. We are getting showed up. But and so this is where this is where it comes in because originally I was thinking that the top division is much better. Like I chase young kids and Dan bites kneecaps are kind of running away because they were beating up on all the. You know, they were beating up on Alex. They were beating up on Aaron. They were beating up on Tristan. Like, they weren't that good. And we were just beating up uh, amongst ourselves on the top division. Me and Matthew and Luke and Matt were all beating up on each other. But uh, I'm starting to get proved and wrong here. And that's why this is so crucial, having these five weeks right here of top division versus bottom division to figure it out. And it's kind of sounding like the bottom division might be better. So, we got to get our crap together, Top Division. Got to get our crap together. And what else did I want to say? I think that was it for the opening that I wanted to say in this podcast. So, I mean, elsewhere on the league, Aaron gets a win. I lost. I mean, I guess I can go over results real quick. Give you my thought. I mean, okay. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of fantasied out, I guess, a little bit because I already wrote the power rankings. I don't know what else to say because I, I I feel like some of the stuff that I want to say is just going to be weep. Like I've already said it in the power rankings. Um, nothing I really want to address going forward. So I'm not sure what to do next, to be honest. I'm not sure what to do next. So I will figure that out, and I'll get right back on the podcast. And we'll keep talking. Maybe at halftime, maybe I can think about it some more. I'm not sure. Or maybe I'll bring some, get the FaceTime going. All right, this podcast has already started out horribly. First of all, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that first segment in because my stupid brain forgot to turn the mic around. I forgot that I was recording the back of the podcast, right? I thought I was recording the front um, front of the mic, but I was recording the back of the mic because that's how I do it now. But I forgot, so I had the stupid front of the mic facing. So I might just turn the gain way up and hope that you guys can hear it because I don't feel like talking about that stuff again. Um... This is going to be a dud of a podcast this week. I'm just not feeling it. I don't know why. I'm just not feeling it this week. It probably, of course, has to do with me losing, I bet. Um, Because you always feel better. You always feel better after winning fantasy. And like I said, if you didn't already hear, I'm just going to say it again. But after you win in fantasy, you do feel like you can be defeated, but you feel much better. You feel much better about your week. 
and the week coming ahead and it just feels better to win in fantasy but when you lose in fantasy at least for me when i lose in fantasy i start panicking and i start thinking well when am i going to win again it just seems like inevitable that i won't win again because your team has such a bad performance you're just like oh my team is bad like they will never win another game which is what i'm pretty sure which is what tristan was thinking you know when he was making all those wheeling and dealing trades earlier this season and um so just kind of you lose for me at least i lose and i'm just like when do i win again and that's totally going through my head right now i I mean i genuinely like i've got a very good chance of losing to alex this week because his team is good his team is very good and they're in full health now they're in full health Alex has no one on by this week and no one out injured. So basically, I have to actually play like a good fantasy game. Everyone who's played him in these previous weeks, they didn't have to play a good fantasy game. But of course, now I have to play a good fantasy game against the one team that doesn't set a lineup. And then the week after, Christian McCaffrey comes off of, uh, what's it called? Uh, Christian McCaffrey comes off of IR. So yeah. I'm I'm done. I'm done so. That's basically what it comes down to. Um so basically how I ended the last podcast. Bah, I don't know. I'll be back with more podcast. I'll try to think of some stuff to talk about. I'm not really sure what else to talk about this week. Um I don't know how I went on for, you know, an hour before. But I guess I guess I'll find something to talk about. So we'll see. See you in a minute. Uh, I couldn't come up with anything to podcast about, really. Um, so this week's podcast is gonna be super short. Um. I guess, oh, trophies. I have to give out trophies. I didn't give them out last week, did I? No, I did give them out last week. All right, trophies, trophies, trophies. Control C. Let's copy and paste it over here. I'll paste it on week eight, so I remember for week eight. Control V. Trophies. East Lansing. Applebee's run. One sec. What do I usually do? Put it under points for it. Eh, it doesn't matter then. East Lansing Alvarez run for scoring the least points this week. I think it goes to. It does Matt Rosquitz. I was sleeping on him for a while and he proved why I was sleeping on him this week. It was a rough week for him. He, he played a good lineup. Uh, his players just didn't just didn't perform and if i was matt right now like the going off of like my thing of like panicking will i ever be good again if i was matt i'd be saying saying the same thing right now oh my gosh will my players ever perform again will they ever do what they did you know those last couple weeks and it's just kind of like a mental thing because surely they will uh chuba hubbard maybe not but you know once he gets nick chubb and David Montgomery back. I'm sure he'll be cooking. Tyreek Hill, Robert Woods. Tyreek Hill, I might be nervous that he may not ever be good again. Robert Woods, we he'll, he'll be all right. And he'll keep getting that consistent, you know, score line of, of nine or above, I think. Mark Andrews, I don't know. See, I'm just looking at, see, like, that. I'm even doing it for Matt right now. I'm looking at his lineup. I'm like, who's going to be good again? Because Chuba Hubbard might not necessarily be good again. Because he's Chuba Hubbard, and he plays Atlanta, so that's a favorable matchup. But week nine, it's uh, Christian McCaffrey's back. And they'd face New England, then they face Arizona, then Washington. So Chuba Hubbard's got, you know, a while before he might be good again. If that, he may never be good again. Tyreek Hill, who knows what's up with the Chiefs. Robert Woods, like I said, will be fine. Mark Andrews, I don't know when he'll be good again. I feel like Mark Andrews has been very hot cold. And he has. 2, 5, 10, 6, 30, 12, 4. So it's kind of hot cold. Defense was a bad pick. We all know that. 
Henry Ruggs, I don't think he's he's hot and cold. He's not going to be having stellar week again. So I don't know. I'm doing it for Matt right now. Like I said, though, like it's just kind of like a game that I play with myself. Like, will I be good again? Will any of my team come back? So I'm not sure. For me and Matt right now, I've convinced myself we're we're never going to be good again. So hopefully that's not true. But that's what I've got in my head. Uh, what was touted as the matchup of the week, Dan by Sneakhouse for Sigma JL Grindset, the Progressive Insurance, uh, Justice League, Justice League Progressive, and Progressive Insurance, uh, cashback match matchup of the week, uh, turned out to be kind of a dud. Matthew came out and did nothing really, did nothing. Only one player, uh, as of Monday night, just before halftime, has more than ten points, and that was Chris Godwin. Patrick Mahomes put up a stinker. Daryl Henderson put up a stinker. Darnell Mooney. Sorry, Matthew. I don't know why you played Darnell Mooney. I think that was a bad play. Maybe there was no one else to put in there, but I think that was a bad play. Not to come after you, but kind of to come after you. I mean, Darnell Mooney, come on. Come on, man. You really thought he was going to pop off? I don't know. I guess let me let me go look at the players that he could have played. Let's see. Let's try and give him some credit. I won't be too mad harsh if if we can't find anyone on the waivers. Just taking forever to load. It ain't loading. There we go. Three, two, one. Nope, still hasn't loaded. Uh, more vamping. I've just got a vamp right now for a second. So while that loads, Ricky Seals Jones. I think that was a fine pickup. Melvin Gordon. Uh, that was a fine flex play. Only nine points, but flex, I feel like you expect about ten points. So that was that was all right. Dan Carlson was a good pickup for Tyler Bass. I mean, I guess looking at it, like I'm not scared for Matthew really at all. I, I think if Patrick Holmes doesn't get good again, uh, you just play Tom Brady. Kamara's always got the potential to have a good game. Daryl Henderson Jr.'s uh, proving that he's always got the potential. Chris Godwin's always going to be... Good. Stefan Diggs is always going to be good. Darren Waller is already. Like, I'm not worried about Matt. I'm not worried for Matthew either. I'm not worried for Connor either. Because he won and two of his starting running backs were injured. He played Kenyon Drake and Mark Ingram as his starting running backs and still won. So, Connor shouldn't. Be, I'm not worried about him either. I want Marquise Brown so bad. I want him on my team. Um, so, let me know. Connor's wide receivers are ridiculous. Mike Evans, T. Higgins, Marquise Brown, Emmanuel Sanders. How the heck did he come up with that? All right, so who would I have picked up instead of Darnell Mooney? Let me see who's sitting here. Corey Davis probably would not have picked him up, to be fair. I probably would have picked up Jacoby Myers, who only got 4.4, 4. 4, so not much better. AJ Green, I probably would have picked up. Christian Kirk, Nelson Aguilar. Those four guys I would have picked up before Don Mooney. Like, honestly, hand over my heart, I definitely would have picked up those guys. Especially Christian Kirk. I've got, I, I can't decide. He, 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 I drop him after week five, pick up Rondell Moore. And now Christian Kirk's gone off and gotten two touchdowns. He hadn't scored any touchdowns. So I was like, all right, they're just not going to pass to him. And now he's got two touchdowns. And so I can just tell. I can tell that if I pick him up, he's not going to score touchdowns. But if someone else picks him up, he's going to play fine. Anyways, Matthew, sorry I didn't mean to roast you so bad about playing Darnell Mooney. That was unnecessary how long I went on about that for. Um, But like you said, just bad week. Just bad week for Matthew. I'm sure there's plenty to come. Um... The good thing for Matthew is I lost. So now there are three teams at four and or four five and two. And so Matthew's only two games behind. And um but the bad thing is Tristan won. So now Tristan is at four and three. And he's one game ahead of Matthew now, all of a sudden, you know, after winning those three games in a row, all of a sudden Tristan's ahead of Matthew. And so there's one, two, three, four teams, 
four teams are ahead of Matthew at least. Uh, who else is going to be ahead of Matthew? Herbie Fully Loaded's ahead of Matthew too. So Matthew's out of the playoffs again. He's back out of the playoffs. And he's got two games separation between the top teams. So the good, well, that was the good thing. That was the good thing that I lost because otherwise it would have been three, three. What, what's that like work out to? Like, so I would have been six and one, three games difference between me and Matthew. I would have been one game difference between, you know, Zach and Connor. I just think like because like the, the gap from him to the top is smaller. It's only two games. It's not three games. Or it stayed at two games. You know what I'm saying? So right now, it f- oh, no, it did climb. All right, that was pointless. Let's move on. Uncle Ron's guitar did saves the Dwight Army of Champions from embarrassment. As aforementioned, that would have been bad. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that part in, like I said, and just boost up the... Uh, boost up the gain, see if I can get you to listen, because I don't know. I don't feel like talking again. Um, but yeah, Uncle Ernest Guitarded. De Ernest Johnson, play of the week. Good thing that trade didn't go through for Aaron, because you take out to Ernest Johnson and you put in... My, oh, actually, Miles Gaskin was pretty good. Uh, Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Scratch that. Aaron would have won. I just I thought for some reason if you took out Darren Johnson and put in one of his backups, it would have not been so pretty. But it was perf it was pretty it was perfectly pretty. Except his wide receivers are still trash. I'd trade you uh, the the problem is I I don't really I do though, I do. Well no, I don't really want Damian Harris. I'm I'm trying to decide. Nah, he's position rank twenty four. I just had three pretty good weeks in a row, though. 9-8, 16-8, 23-3. So he's definitely trending up. But then he go, yeah, and he's got some favorable matchups. I mean, Chargers, maybe not. But Carolina, definitely. Cleveland, maybe not. Atlanta, definitely. Tennessee, definitely. Buffalo. So three in the next six weeks, he's got three good matchups, three bad matchups. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I want Damian Harris. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Just looking else. Is there anyone else I want? Najee Harris? Or well, I don't know. Put Najee Harris in instead of Darrell Williams. Najee gets maybe 20. Aaron's looking at 120 points in this week. So Aaron's team is turning out to be the team that I wanted, which was three running backs that would get you 20 points each week. And then you wouldn't even have to worry about anything else because your running backs would be so good. But that is not what happened for me. I got one running. I got three running backs. One I traded away. One's on IR, and one is Dookie. Green Bay is not giving him any touches. I I love Aaron Jones until the end of time. He will not miss a game ever for me. I owe him that because he got he got me that win against uh, Aaron. So he I will not. Never, I won't. That will be my Achilles hero, but I will die on that hill. I will. I declare that right now. I will die on that hill. I will play Aaron Jones to the end of time because he has earned it for me. And like I said, Alex, uh, healthy Alex is scary. Alex, Delvin Cook, add on twenty points. Adam Thielen, give him ten points. It's another thirty points. He's at one or nine points. That's like a real lineup, real matchup. And I have to play that next week. So I am quaking in my boots i'm honestly and then watch it like alex like the first time alex sets his lineup will be next week too that'd be pretty funny and then uh not the progressive insurance cashback match matchup wake up matchup of the week but the liberty mutual what's in your wallet justice league matchup of the week i chase on kids versus herbie fully loaded that one was the biggest blockbuster yet one t- or not yet, but uh, but but this week it, it took the it took the throne of Matthew versus uh, Connor. So what a week we had though! Two two great games. Well, two games that were going to be hyped up, but didn't really live up to. Okay, Connor versus Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow took the dub. Interestingly enough, Derek Henry versus Joe Mixon. 
Derrick Henry took the dub as we'd think. Josh Jacobs barely edged out James Conner. And that was an interesting matchup. James Josh Jacobs versus James Conner. Kind of too, like... What, does J- does James Conner have competition in the backfield? I feel like he does, but I couldn't tell you who. Um, Chase Edmonds. So he does have co- competition. So these are both two running backs that are, like, good, but have major competition in the backfield. And they both did well, getting 12 points each. DeAndre Hopkins versus Devontae Adams. Huge blockbuster of a matchup. Um... Devonte Adams comes out with a win there. Interesting. Devonte Adams was placed on the COVID list. Uh, won't be a big deal for Luke since Luke's got such good depth. <laughs> Funny enough, Luke has Chase Edmonds and played him with nine points. I didn't look ahead. Oh yeah, he's got Cole Beasley, Jalen Waddle. So Luke can Luke can easily slot in a guy right next to him. Then Terry McLaurin versus Cooper Cup. What a matchup that was. I mean, Cooper Cup is just ridiculous this season absolutely bonkers no one's gonna come close to him i don't think he had two bad weeks quote unquote and that was six four and nine two i mean and then he goes play houston the tennessee then san fran by green bay jacks jeez oh man i mean cooper cup's gonna be living large unless like matthew stafford gets covid or something but terry mclaurin respectable 18 two um Travis Kelsey versus TJ Hawk. That was a good matchup. Travis Kelsey comes away with it. With the flexes was a good match. Cordero Patterson versus Chase Edmonds. Cordero. But here is where the difference was made. It was an interesting play by Luke to play the Baltimore defense. Would I have done it? Clearly, I'm looking at it and saying no. But I want to say no anyways. I mean, it is easy to be like, oh, Cincinnati. But what was Cincinnati's like? Like, because I wonder what their rank was. You know how they give like a positional rank? What would Cincinnati's offense have been ranked coming into this game? Because that would be important. It would would definitely have been important uh, for me looking at it. And the Baltimore Ravens had done, you know, well. They got 10 points against the Chargers. So I guess it's not glaringly obvious. Obviously, 41 points is mad. mad, But would I, just in general, would I have played Baltimore's defense against Cincinnati? Probably not. And here's some of the reasons why. Their secondary is so thin right now. And to be honest, I haven't really liked what they've done on defense all that much. So, I don't know. Obviously, hindsight's 20, 20 it helps. But the big point swing was the defense. Baltimore versus Buccaneers. Buccaneers got 18 points. 18 points against Chicago. That was a clear and obvious play by Zach. Of course, he was going to play that. And the Ravens got negative six. So, that is a 24-point swing. If the Ravens had just even gotten, like, five points, Luke could have won. You know, I mean... So it just came down to that defensive play and it shows why defense is so important um, in, in in fantasy football. And then Nick Folk, oh my gosh. I, I've been having, you know, the toughest time with the kickers this year. I Tyler Bass dropped him, picked up Nick Folk. Nick Folk went eight and then four. So, then I, so I dropped him. Then he got 17, then three, then 14. So I just can't figure out kickers this year. And it's kind of making me mad. Last but not least, I lost to Tristan. Um, like I said, no comment, really. I I, re- I don't have a comment. Um, kind of my core, my I mean, my guy, my my fearless leader, Josh Allen, was injured or was out on bye. So, um, um, I was happy with the way Matt did. Matt Ryan performed coming in. Um. And like I said, no comment. Really don't have anything else to say. Uh, well played by Tristan. His team is trending right in the right direction. It's trending up. Um, he's got the right tools. He's got the right players. And it just comes down to if he can make the right coaching calls from here on out. So, so good win by Tristan. That is four and three. After starting one and three, he's won um, three in a row to make it four and three. 
Three weeks can change a lot. All right. All right, what else do I like to talk about? Uh, I kind of like to talk about the projected standings, right? I like to talk about that. We'll go check that out real quick. League home, take me home. Trade voting, there's trade voting to be done. Interesting. Oh, De'Aaron Johnson for T for T Higgins for vote. Vote on it real quick. I'll allow it. No point in vetoing it. I just should have never put myself at number one in the power rankings. That was that was my big mistake. Okay. Projected standings. The ESPN is going to be at fourth right now. And they've given me 56% playoff percentage. Probably That'll probably change by tomorrow. We'll see. But it's important to win. So, I mean, it was it was important for me to win those five games. Um, I get another shot at everyone in my division. I still have to play um, one, two, three. I still have to play three players from Losers Talk Offs like Jim. So there's a lot of fantasy left to be played. I haven't lost hope yet. Uh, Luke's still leading the charge, 96%. Zach at 95%. Uh, Uncle Ron got promoted to 2% instead of 1%. Aiden gets 5%. Uh, single drive the grind sets at 69%. New South Charlie Town takes a big blow, 21%. Very low. Cut my nuts is at 42%. That'll likely improve. That'll likely improve. All right. This coming up week, I forget. I'm not going to give my pick record anymore I, I don't care that much i can't remember all right me versus alex this is tough to call i'm saying alex is gonna win i'm gonna stick with that because i think the upset's gonna happen i really don't think i'm gonna be able to find him off i, <laughs> I know that's you know maybe i'm doing reverse psychology but i don't think i'm gonna be able to fend him um zach versus aaron zach aaron is trending in the right direction but zach's just too good sigma jail glance at first cut my nuts i'm taking uh, cut my nuts and take a Tristan because Tristan is absolutely trending in the right direction. I will, th- I do think Matthew's going to come back. He'll probably score over 100 points this week. But, um, cut my nuts is just, like I said, just trending in the right direction. Has has all the pieces right now. Um, people are, you know, he, he's not peaking, but he's on the rise. But we'll, you know, we'll see over the next couple of weeks if, if he, if he did peak. Um, and so he's definitely on the rise. Um, maybe is peaking, but I think he's. I think this could be the peak. I think he could peak and beat uh, Matthew, and then you know, kind of go stagnant. But um, I think this week he definitely takes that from Matthew. Matt versus Connor. I think Matt's run of Matt's like fantasy run or not fantasy, but like uh, what do you call it? Help me out, people. Matt's Cinderella run of like beating the top teams. I think that's going to come to an end here as well. Uh, he does have a chance, though, because Lamar Jackson is going to be on by. But Connor's two starting running backs come back. Excuse me. Wait a sec. Yeah, he is on by. But yeah, but Zeke and... Um, Zeke and Eckler come back. But Eckler has a tough, mat- tough matchup. I mean, Matt could do it. I could be, you know, on the I slept on him again side, but I just think that um, Connor's team is is just better. So I'm, that's who I'm picking for that. And then last but not least, is it last but not least? No, we got two more to go. Herbie fully loaded, or no, this is last but not least. Herbie fully loaded versus BM Sticky Radjus. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke, but I think Luke could be in for another. No, 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 no. What am I saying? What am I saying? Luke's going to win. Luke's absolutely going to win. Herbie is back for him, first of all. Then Cincinnati is playing the Jets, so that's a dub. Arizona's playing Green Bay, so that's tons of points. 
Cooper Cup's playing Houston, tons of points. Unless they just like rest him because they're like, you know what, we're not going to pass to Cooper this week. It's Houston. We'll we'll beat Houston in other ways. I don't know. Uh, Travis Kelsey against the Giants. That's a win. Uh, that's points. James Robinson against Seattle. It's not ideal. I don't know who's going to play, but I think uh, yeah, I think Luke. Luke will handle Aiden. But if Aiden gets a win, I mean that is uh, that would be that would be fantastic. Trophies. Oh gosh. Pretty sure scoring least sports was Matt. Then Zach was Wendy's guy. Naps McGee I've gave to Tristan. Moving to Kansas City, I gave to Connor. Boy from Memorial Trophy goes to Luke. I might rename it the Luke Wallace Boy from Memorial <laughs> Trophy. Cause he's getting some he, he <laughs> he's also getting these. He tried, but it was all in vain. He's trying so hard, but it's all it's all in vain. It's all in vain for him so far. Um, does less call goes to Matt again. Sprite and banana challenge goes to Matt and Matt's becoming a fan favorite for these trophies. He's gets tons of trophies, maybe not necessarily all good trophies, but he gets tons of trophies. Connor's canopy for a hard fought win. That one I gave to Aiden, even though he beat Matt by a large margin, he fought hard for it. He's been, he stuck it out with those players that he put in last week. He, Got a great pickup at quarterback this week with Tua. His coaching efficiency is ridiculous. He's just playing. He's just playing so smartly, so so very eloquently. Uh, this Aiden chap is, and and I got to hand it out to him for being, you know, a guy that was saying, "Oh, I'm I'm probably not going to check my lineup to to what he's doing, what he's able to t- throw together through all this adversity." Well done. Just absolutely well done. So those are my trophies. Very abbreviated, very abridged because I forgot to record. But again, kept it (laughs) concise. So probably better for the listeners. But I think that's going to be it for my podcast this week. My voice is getting hoarse. I'm getting tired. I'm getting a little fantasy. I'm hitting the doldrums in fantasy. Not going to lie. Even though I am like the biggest fantasy fan, it's definitely hitting me. The mid-season slump right now. So, um, hopefully I can come back next week with a good episode. Uh, I hope you guys don't take offense that I didn't call for a fantasy podcast tonight. <clears throat> but like I said, it was just a little fantasy doubt. I don't think I would have again provided a really good, uh, interview. So that's all. That's all I got for you. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you next week. See you next week.